Hey everybody, this is Zachary Jeans, and let's keep walking through the New Testament. So today we are in Matthew chapter 16, and we're going through the whole chapter. Uh, some days it's hard to get, get going, and today, I don't know what it was. Maybe it's just the weather outside, it's kind of steel gray, and just, I don't know. But, that said, let's keep walking, okay? Um... Let's ask God for help. Lord, we love you. It is one of those days for me. I don't know if it is for other people. But today is the day that we need to push through. This is not a day where it's either incredibly hard or incredibly easy. Um, but we need your help. We need your help for these days that are kind of like meh. And I just ask that, Jesus. Please open up my eyes to see and my ears to hear and my heart to understand and do that for these people that are uh, taking time to get in your word, Lord. We love you. Amen. All right. Chapter 16, Matthew. And the Pharisees and Sadducees came. And to test them, him, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. That's a miracle. And these are the religious leaders of the Jewish people. Jesus answered them. When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be a stormy day, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you can't interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. So they asked for a miracle. Like, prove to us that you are the anointed one, the Messiah, the Christ. And he says to them, to this evil generation, not everybody, because other people saw miracles, right? But to them, the only sign they get is Jonah. And what was Jonah? Jonah was the prophet that was sent to Nineveh, an evil town. And uh, he was like, I'm not going to go preach you know, repentance to them. I'm heading out. And then God, you know, basically made his life really hard and eventually put him in the fish. And he was there for three days. And then up out of that fish, he was spit onto the ground. He's like, okay, I learned my lesson. I'm going to go send the message of repentance to Nineveh. And Nineveh repents. And it actually irks Jonah at the end. But the point is, is the main sign is down for three days, back to life. And you see the miracle, and that is Jesus in the grave for three days, back out, and on we go. So, when the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread, and Jesus said to them, Watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Leaven, you know, yeast makes it rise, whatever. And they began discussing it among themselves, saying, We brought no bread. But Jesus, aware of this, said, Oh, you little faith, are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Don't you yet perceive? Don't you not remember the five loaves or the 5,000 and how many baskets you gathered? Or how about the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many baskets you gathered there? How is it that you fail to understand that I didn't speak about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of teachings that come from the Pharisees and Sadducees, right? So put two and two together here, guys. Now, when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Son of Man being the title that is most commonly referred to here and he liked them most. And that's that's from the Old Testament prophets. And anyway. And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, 
but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you do, rather, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. So he was looking to see, had they finally gotten it? Did they finally figure out, like, is he just like a one of these prophets that had been raised somehow from the dead? Or was it John the Baptist? Of course not. They knew John. Um, and he wanted to know if they understood who he was. And, and Peter sees it crystal clear. He is the anointed one. He is the Christ. He's the Messiah. He is the living son of God. And that's not a like just like somebody who believes in God, like that we're all sons and daughters of God now by faith. No, he is like literally the expression of the creator of the universe materialized in reality. This is Jesus. And Peter is a name, not his real first given name. This is a name that is given to Peter. Uh, his name was Simon. He was the son of a fisherman. And and he's given this new name, Peter. And it's a play on the name. It's like Little Rock. And Jesus says, on this rock, this, this um, expression of faith, this new, this foundational faith moment um, in Peter, specifically, and then generally, those who like him have this faith, um, will receive the kingdom of heaven, will receive God's kingdom in themselves, and they will dwell in heaven too at the end of this life, right? And on this earth, there's real power given to those who have faith. And it's pretty expansive. And I'm not going to speculate here in this moment. There's a lot of study into loosing things and binding things. But, uh, if you're walking with God in faith and you have a relationship with him, he dwells in you. When you're acting spiritually, that has real solid reality impact in heaven and on earth. And from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed. On the third day, be raised Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Peter had just expressed this radical faith, this true understanding of who he is, and then now... Matthew juxtaposes that a time when Peter literally was like, okay, you're the son of God. But now, even though you're this triumphant reality expressed here by God in a person, um, now I'm going to treat you like you're just a human uh, leader. And I'm going to try and protect you. No, don't do this. Don't do that. You, if you die, you can't come. And again, Peter's not totally understanding. And maybe we don't. Maybe I don't at times really grasp. This is God Almighty in the flesh. And when he dies, he's saying, I will be killed and I will be raised up in three days. Same thing, basically, he told the Pharisees and Sadducees. You're going to get the sign of Jonah. I'm going down for three. I'm coming back. And he tells Peter his, I'm going to build the church on you, right? Get behind me, Satan. Enemy. Get behind me. You're hindering what I'm doing here. So <clears throat> let's not try and uh, put kitty gloves on real faith. Let's not try to overprotect real faith, real walking by faith. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. 
For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, forfeits his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And you'll see that in Acts, in the book of Acts. Um, they see the glorious version of Jesus risen from the dead uh, for about 40 days. Jesus, razor sharp here after he talks to Peter. This is about heaven and hell. This is not about just what you see here on the earth. Yes, there's death, but then there's life. And there's also judgment. And there is a real time coming. So, all the good things and money and bad things, sins, pleasures, whatevers, you think you could somehow wrap your arms around billion, billionaire dollar style on this earth and it's all achievable. All of that. You could gain all the entire world if you could somehow wrap your ambition around it, right? For however fleeting moment that is. And you can lose your soul. Or you can do as you do in this world and walk by faith and be gathered up in love by Christ and his angels to his father at the end and live real life forever and ever and ever. And it's a real step of faith, right? So, wow. So tomorrow we are in 17. Until tomorrow, this is day 26. 25. Today is day 25. Let's keep walking. God bless. Bye-bye.